nobody has a Bluetooth speaker, which surprises me. <laughs> but uh, I mean, we'll do what we can. So uh, yes, what's new in Nextcloud? So it turns out we just had a new release of Nextcloud this past Wednesday, Nextcloud Hub 8. Um, and so that's me, Brent Jervet. If you don't know me, oh, I think uh, there's a, if I click, oh, great. Um, so this is me. I think that looks like me. I have a twin brother. If you see him around, try to figure out whether it's him or me. <laughs> Just ask tech questions. You'll probably figure that one out. Um, but I'm with Nextcloud now. It's been something like, I don't know, 10 months, uh, which has been a pure joy. Uh, they kind of say, like, careful meeting your heroes. Frank is one of them there, CEO of founder of Nextcloud as well. And uh, it turns out everyone on Nextcloud is really amazing. And it's been a pure joy to be a part of that team. Um, I heard, guys. So we have some hecklers here from Jupiter Broadcasting. Uh, so I also do some podcasting with Jupiter Broadcasting. So you might know my voice. You might recognize my voice. I say some people are like, yep, yep, this voice. Hi, Chris. How's it going? Um, so Linux Unplugged is one of the podcasts that I co-host there at Jupiter Broadcasting. Uh, so my question to you is, uh, what is Nextcloud? So what is Nextcloud to you? And I'd like to get a few answers uh, trying to answer this question. So anybody willing to uh, give it a try? How would you define Nextcloud? Is it a file sync option? Yeah, there's someone over there who wants to embarrass Open themselves. source version of a lot of stuff you on the cloud. OK, that's a great start. Yeah, so what kind of things on the cloud? Files. So file syncing? File syncing, calendar, okay. uh, voice, video, nice. chat. So chatting with friends and family and colleagues and stuff like that. OK, great. So we're getting somewhere. Does everybody else have any experience with more than just file syncing with Nextcloud? No, I see here. Um, I hear from the community often that uh, Nextcloud is amazing at file syncing and file sharing, and that is true, and it's certainly a Dropbox replacement and is excellent at that. Uh, but that's kind of Nextcloud like, I don't know, five years ago? I mean, it's still good at that, but Nextcloud has come a long way and does a heck of a lot more, as that fine gentleman uh, hinted to us. So um, this is the dashboard of Nextcloud. Just to give you a sense of like, there's a lot that can happen in Nextcloud. You can treat it almost as your, uh, uh, maybe like, your dashboard for your life. You can do all sorts of things in there. You could like share a cookbook with your wife or your husband. You could, I don't do video calls with your grandmother as I do. Uh, there's all sorts of different things Nextcloud can do with you, both in, in the personal world and also the business world, of course. Um, so we have a pretty deep seated mission, which I think would match up pretty well with the crowd here. I mean, I know you Linux fest folks, and I'm one of them. Uh, open source, super, super important to us. And I see some nods in the crowd like, yeah, we deeply believe in that. Yes. Uh, the great news is uh, we're always going to be open source because we have no choice. The license that we chose, um, a GPL3, uh, kind of forces us to continue to do that. Everyone gets to keep their copyright that they um, uh, committed to the Nextcloud project. There's like thousands of contributors. And so it would be a bit, a very, very difficult challenge to go ask them all to, um, for permission to change that. So open source always super important to us. Also, um, we're trying to decentralize the internet. Uh, one of the scariest, when I first started looking for open source ideals and technologies, um, I kind of got scared by the idea of all of my personal data, but also all of your data being held by, I don't know, two, three, four of those big tech companies that I think come to mind immediately when I say that. Yeah. Um, so we want to continue to offer a solution that's open source, that anybody can contribute to, that sort of offers some of those same very competitive uh, aspects of our digital lives these days. So that's what we're aiming for. And we want it to be able to run on anything from Raspberry Pi, if you, you know, have realistic expectations, uh, to some of the biggest implementations that we've seen, uh, which are up to like 
two million plus users. Um, so we have, yeah, several, several, several examples of that happening, which is pretty impressive. It's mostly the same code doing that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I always pause because that's incredible to me. I don't, even, I can't even fathom what two million users looks like. So uh, we often say Nextcloud is an open source content collaboration platform. That's kind of vague on purpose because, well, it can do a lot of stuff that you want it to. And today I'm going to give you a quick rundown of some of the things that I want to showcase for you. But Frank is giving a talk immediately after this talk, so I would suggest just keep your seat. It's already warm. Uh, and he's going to go into uh, AI um, that we're doing in Nextcloud and some of the implications of AI in the open source world. Uh, we saw that talk at uh, Texas Linux Fest. It was excellent. So I'm just kind of warming you up. I'm like the, you know, the, the warm up crowd. So. Uh, I'm also going to try to showcase this through the lens of my own personal experience. And uh, I started hosting a Nextcloud instance for my family, I think it's like six years ago now. And for the same principles that I mentioned was like I wanted all of our data to be held in our control, not these other big companies. Uh, so I had a deep personal connection with what Nextcloud can do for a family and friends. Uh, so I'm going to try to throw in some personal stuff in there for you as well. I sort of can't help it most of the time. Uh, like I mentioned, Wednesday was Nextcloud Hub 8. Now, uh, to define Nextcloud Hub, we sort of say that Nextcloud Hub is the collection of everything that you can do in the web interface and everything from groupware to talk to all these other things that I'll show you uh, here. But uh, Hub 8 came out Wednesday, which was amazing. It worked super hard, and there's some amazing features. Uh, so I would highly encourage you to go check it out if you want on our website. It's kind of all over. Just have a look. There's some amazing features I won't be able to go into today because we have a uh, well. Nextcloud has grown quite a bit. We have over what 110 people now uh, working at Nextcloud and a massive community of contributors. So there's just a lot going on every release. So I'm not going to be able to cover it all. Please go check out more stuff. Yeah, go ahead. What's the upgrade process like? It's, it kind of depends how you're running your Nextcloud, of course, right? If you're running it in Docker, then you can do a Docker pull. Uh, you can also, you know, if you're running it other ways, so it sort of depends. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for those who have Nextcloud instances already uh, running, uh, we're going to do a rollout over the next couple of months to slowly, you know, we don't want everyone to get it all of a sudden because in case you know, bad things happen. So uh, there will be a slow rollout. So you'll see like little indications in your Nextcloud instance if you already have one of when it's available to you and the upgrade process. It's a VM, so it breaks. Oh, great. OK. Yeah, just come knocking on my door if something goes wrong. And I'll <laughs> try to connect you with someone who knows better. <laughs> uh, so Nextcloud files um, is kind of the core of everything in Nextcloud, sharing files, syncing files but also is the basis of a lot of the other applications. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I mean, you may have seen this interface if you use your Nextcloud uh, web interface. I'm curious uh, how many people who run their own Nextclouds or have access to it um, use the web interface versus just maybe the desktop clients or mobile clients. So, desktop client, mobile client people? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, web interface folks? Yeah, all right, great, thank you. Uh, so there's been co some cool uh, stuff happening with files. I mean, there's uh, Federation, which is a really neat feature that's been around for quite a long time. It was one of the features that I kind of geeked out with uh, five years ago when I started. So I just installed a couple. If you don't know what Federation is, it's, uh, different servers can talk to each other and share information without necessarily sending all of the data to the other server, right? I mean, Federation's kind of a big thing. We have been doing it for a while. Um, but also, we revamped the interface recently. So it's now Vue.js, which offers us um, the ability to make it more modular, which is good. It's a heck of a lot faster. We're seeing like 65% faster load times, which is always uh, great for a web interface. Um, and we have other features that came out, such as like uh, one-time links, which is a neat feature if you're doing sharing, and QR code sharing, things like that. 
Uh, we also have next called groupware, which is kind of a combination of calendar, contacts, and mail. Um, and I often look at our groupware, at least from my personal standpoint, but this, these are obviously extremely useful in the business context as well. But for me personally, um, it was a really great way to de-Google myself. And I see people like, yes, yes, yes. So um, yeah, this was my, one of my main motivations to really run my own Nextcloud server. I think probably five years ago, Alex, you would agree that I probably shouldn't have been running my own Nextcloud server because I'm not a system admin or anything like that. But uh, I found great success, actually. And uh, it, yeah, it allowed me to kind of get contact syncing and calendar syncing and my email and stuff like that off of uh, those places where I felt kind of strange about having that stuff there. So if you haven't gone through that process yet, because, well, if you're interested and haven't done it yet, uh, Nextcloud is a, actually a really powerful way of doing it. Uh, there's DevX5. Anybody know DevX5? Uh, if you're on Android, it's a really great way to have your calendars and contacts just feel like a native part of the operating system. And it's just like seamless. So. It, it's almost like Google thought that they should have Nextcloud in there, too. Um, so that would be a huge recommendation for me if you're going down that path. Uh, Nextcloud Talk is our chat and video system. Um, well, it does a whole lot, a lot of things, but uh, we use it a ton at Nextcloud because, you know, dog fooding. So we're using this thing every single day, super battle tested, and we love it. Uh, one of the neat features in Nextcloud Hub 8, which came out this week, is you can now do editing of files collaboratively right in your conversations and also in your video calls, uh, which is a feature that um, is highly requested. It's super cool. It's really, really neat and very convenient. So that's a, that's a neat thing if you've been using Nextcloud files to give that a try. So here it's obviously a spreadsheet that you can edit uh, in line right in your... Uh, right in your chats, which is cool. So instead of you know bouncing between documents and your communications, you could do it all right in the same place. Uh, we this week also in Hub Eight introduced federated chatting with Nextcloud Talk. Um, kind of a neat feature, and uh, it behaves a lot like the file federations if you've played with that at all. Um, it uses Open Cloud Mesh on the back end, which was developed along with CERN and a, a couple other open source projects as well, which is kind of neat. And we're hoping to federate calendars and other pieces of Nextcloud as well. So uh, look forward to that. <clears throat> uh, here I'm showcasing, this is one of our bots. So you see the Samurai bot, which is a, well, the Samurai bot, which I think is a really clever name. It uses some of our AI technology in the background to summarize long conversations. So let's say you, like me, maybe you work with a bunch of folks who are mostly European-based. And so when I wake up in the morning and I sit down at my desk, I've got a whole day of European stuff I need to get caught up on. So uh, this bot in particular is a great way to summarize uh, basically the entire threads that have happened. Um, and it uses AI on the background, which Frank will talk a little bit more uh, in the next talk. Um, but it's uh, one of those neat bots that's available in talk. There's a, a few more as well, but I just wanted to tease one of those so you know it's there. And uh, here's where I wanted to play one of these videos with a little bit of sound. Uh, we have a great narrator, Maya, which is why I have her on the screen. Um, but we're not going to hear some sound. Can I get a mouse over there? Come on. Where's it going? Uh, pardon my um, inability to play the video. Let's see what I can do here. Can I do that? Almost. Hmm. Oh, that would have been so great. Uh, does anyone have questions about anything up to this point? That's fun. Oh, I went and broke all the work we did earlier. <laughs> nice mountains. Uh, thank you. I have a question about the AI stuff. I know Frank's talking about it. <laughs> it's like the one thing I was trying not to do deep dives on. But yeah, um, Alex, go ahead. I can wait. Well, I mean. Where is, where is it running? Where, where are the models running? 
Uh, you have options, basically. So uh, in Nextcloud, um, and I didn't want to take Frank's sort of thunder on this one, but maybe I'll just tease you a little bit. Uh, the AI in Nextcloud is meant to also be an alternative to these same things we're seeing of big cloud companies having basically most of the control and all of the data being funneled into like open AI and those kind of companies. So uh, local AI is super important, so you can run it on your own server. Uh, we recently introduced the ability to use your own GPU and things like that. Frank will go into details. Um, but we know not everybody wants to or can do that. Um, so you have a few different options. You can run this stuff locally if you want, if that's important to you, with a bunch of different large language models. Uh, you have tons of options. You can hot swap your own in there, which is really neat. But you can also use integrations for some of these AI as a service uh, implementations. So if you want to use OpenAI, you're super happy with it, you're okay with some of the implications, uh, we have that integration as well, and you can use that. So. Um, again, details will come in, in a little bit. Uh, how am I doing for time? Okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry that I broke my computer here. That's frustrating. Uh, any other questions about anything I've shown up, up to this point? Just to buy some time, I think I can multitask. Another question. Yeah. You, you mentioned the data X5, I pulled it up real quick, I was looking at it. Can you just expand a little bit more? Is that something you're using in conjunction with Nextcloud? Yeah, uh, it is. It's, it's um, an application you can find on various app stores, like Android, that's something you use, but you can use it on Google Play as well. Uh, it's an application you install that is almost, you can see it like a bridge between the Android interface and its implementations and integrations and, uh, and uh, Nextcloud. And so it talks uh, DAD between it, so web DAD and things like that, to get your calendars and also your contacts to just exist in the native Android ecosystem. So then if you install any calendar app you feel like installing, it'll know how to find that calendar without needing to know how to get to your next cloud server itself. So it's a kind of just a way to make it feel super native on the Android ecosystem. Cool. Yeah, Thanks. does that answer? Thank you. Okay, great. <clears throat> um, yeah, sorry, remind me of the time, I forgot. Uh, 15, 15. 15, okay. Uh, I wanna leave some time for questions, so maybe I'll go a little faster if you don't uh, mind my going. So we'll skip the videos, they don't seem to be Participating. So Nextcloud Office, um, <clears throat> using Clabber Online, we uh, have LibreOffice basically oh, in the good. web. Yeah, in the web interface, which is really neat. Uh, but one of the major benefits to using Nextcloud Office is collaborative editing. So you can edit a spreadsheet, a text document, all this stuff collaboratively with as many people as you like, which is actually really nice uh, when you're working with a team of people uh, creating all sorts of things. So that's a super neat feature. Uh, we have Nextcloud Tables, um, which is a really neat um, know, data processing app, I think is a way I would describe that. Um, <clears throat> the really neat thing that came out uh, this week in Hub 8 is the ability to uh, use the data in Nextcloud Tables and create these applications that they're almost like no code applications that then can appear in your Nextcloud interface on the top navigation bar. So it's almost like you're creating your own applications that you can share with colleagues and you can have different views. So let's say you have a vacation application process. Well, you can define a view for your employees where, okay, maybe they can't modify certain fields, but of course they have to enter when they want to go on vacation and things like that. Uh, but it could be just an app at the top of your Nextcloud interface. So employees just go, ah, I don't feel like a vacation, and they just boop, click on your uh, little app you created, which is really, really kind of a neat thing. Uh, this was going to be a really great demonstration of that. I apologize. Would you put uh, it up on YouTube for us? Yeah, it is on YouTube. So if you go look at it. So um, for Hub 8, we just did a 
uh, release video as well uh, that you can find. Um, I'll just go to nextcloud.com. So uh, well, you'll find it. It's, it's pretty up and center. But yeah, there's a video you can watch. Uh, I apologize for not being able to show you or make you listen to it here. Um, we also have an application, Nextcloud Deck, which is a Kanban board. Anybody, uh, anybody use a Kanban board? Uh, there's someone there who's like, I don't, I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, I see some hands going up. So this is our Kanban uh, and project management application, um, which is, uh, yeah, I, I'm new to this concept. So since joining Nextcloud, I've started using Nextcloud Deck. It is so helpful. It uh, turns out I have a lot to learn for organizing my own life. And uh, DEC is a really great way to organize projects. So if you haven't given it a shot, please do. And if you have any feedback, we'd really appreciate some. Uh, Nextcloud Notes. Does anyone use Nextcloud Notes? Uh, yeah, so uh, Notes is a super important part of sort of my journey into Nextcloud. Uh, I, one of the other main reasons I wanted to bring Nextcloud into my life was to have a knowledge base. So I tinker on a bunch of computer stuff, as many of you guys seem to know, and, uh, but I can't remember any of it. So uh, having a massive knowledge base of just stuff for me, you know. Uh, but also, uh, I end up now sharing uh, notes with like family members and stuff like that. So we have a little projects we're working on and we share a bunch of notes. And the thing I like about Nextcloud Notes is that on my mobile device, it's just like super fast to write notes to myself, to keep track of which day I'm talking at Linux Fest, things like that. So, um, so that's really great. And I have heard of many people who use alternative note systems like Obsidian or Joplin, and I, uh, yeah, um, and sync them with their Nextcloud as well. So if that's, uh, you know, if you're using one of those alternatives, then uh, you can also sync it with your Nextcloud. Yes, you have a question? Yeah. Yes, of course, by default. Yeah, yeah, you know, has, <laughs> Why would you do it any other way, right? Uh, yeah? Uh, for Nextcloud Notes, say if you're syncing Obsidian, can you have that graphical representation of links uh, between I think so that's yeah. where some of the limitations exist, because yeah. Obsidian is amazing, right? Uh, but you can sync the database to different places using Nextcloud. So, okay, great, great question. Uh, so, Notes won't actually interface with Obsidian other than seeing the text files. Yeah. Um, but that's not really, you know, City is way more powerful than that. So I think the best thing to do is use it for syncing and use the Obsidian uh, interface to get the Obsidian. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no problem. There's a question back there. Uh, actually, just a statement. Uh, okay. I think the biggest benefits to me, I use sync thing as well. Nice. But instead, I, I chose to use this on notes because I can pull through the web interface and be able to do quick reference of my notes. Okay. I think that's the biggest benefits for me. And so, do you have both of them interacting together? Uh, and what do you mean by? Well, uh, like, are you modifying Obsidian Notes using Nextcloud Notes? Uh, I, I can't actually, and I'm, I'm getting it because I'm syncing the notes. Cool. The Great. whole folder, yeah. Right. So, the Obsidian Vault is basically the Nextcloud Notes directory. Nice. Uh, it sounds like I have some upgrades to make. So yeah. Nextcloud notes it stores its files and mark just just plain mark it's markdown not, files. It's not in the database. Uh, pardon? It's not in the Nextcloud database. It's just in uh, what I mean. It flat files. It, they're just flat files. Yeah, mark, markdown files, <laughs> uh, which was an attraction to me because it's like I mean powerful enough as it is. Um, will you give me like a five minute heads up whenever that? Yeah, thanks. Uh, of course, mobile clients, we've got all, uh, a bunch of, well, a t all of these features on mobile, uh, including some of the AI stuff as well. That's new in, in Hub 8, is accessible via your mobile devices, which is really, really cool. Um, oh, yeah, we have a new app store. Uh, so we have an app store that includes a bunch of these apps that I've mentioned. So everything in Nextcloud is modular. So everything, even the calendar is modular. You can pull it out if you really don't need it or want it. Uh, but you can add a whole bunch of stuff. So we have, I don't a ton of apps. I don't even know how many now. Um, so I would encourage you to go to apps.nextcloud.com. Just have a browse, see what you can find. There's all sorts of stuff from like maps applications and like cookbook applications and like uh, I've heard Nextcloud News from this crowd. Some people really love Nextcloud News. Uh, but there's all sorts of things. Password managers. There's like this Gpotter sync. I used to sync my podcasts to other clients all around. So yes. Uh, so do the clients have an offline mode? 
Do the clients have an offline or do you have mode? To have a, do you have uh, you know, I use Nextcloud Notes, for instance, offline all the time. Okay. I live kind of in the mountains, as you yeah. saw, uh, in the middle of nowhere, and I don't always have internet. But I'm okay. yeah. But the notes are like local first, and they sync whenever it's available, things like that. Um, I don't know about every single application, but worth worth giving it a try. Yeah. Uh, of course, there are all sorts of other implementations uh, and integrations in Nextcloud that can do a whole bunch of things. There's a question over there. Yeah, I have a question about your modules. That is, is uh, they're sort of like being brought into a, you know, functions or tasks brought into the ecosystem. Yeah. And the question is, what does the ecosystem add to an app such as a standard standalone calendar app? Sure. Yeah. So the question was, um, you can pull all these things into Nextcloud as almost an ecosystem for yourself. What is the advantage of doing that over having a standalone app? So why not just have a notes application and just have a calendar application? And I think there's a, a lot of answers to that question. Uh, one of them is a familiar interface to everything, which is beneficial. Uh, the other one is your various applications can use the data on the back end to talk to each other. So like I mentioned, uh, the video chatting application, that's Cloud Talk, can look at, at your spreadsheets and edit them with you know, the colleague that you're trying to work on something. So there's like different layers of integrations of all your different data that is an advantage versus having a standalone. Uh, so that's one example. Um, but yeah, there's all sorts of other examples to that. But also just from an administrative point of view, you can install your Nextcloud uh, server and then have a bunch of other things plug into it. So you don't have to, let's say, run your own uh, what's a good example? I don't know. Run, run a whole bunch of servers to accomplish the same thing. You can have one thing installed and sort of plug a bunch of stuff into it, which is an advantage for some people. For some people. There's a shared server system yeah. behind a lot of these apps, right. as opposed to having to have a separate server system. For Not that too uh, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that, that would be a big problem. Yeah. Yeah. A shared infrastructure. Yeah, one thing we're working on, um, and and the AI, some of the AI stuff that Frank's going to go into, plugs into this a little bit. But um, Nextcloud is moving into offering like microservices architectures, so being able to run some of these other applications in other Docker containers to accomplish a lot of what you're talking about. So have other servers running, but be a little bit orchestrated by Nextcloud. Uh, I got to move on because I think I'm running out of time here. Uh, but yeah, there's all sorts of integrations that you can uh, you can have with your Nextcloud. <clears throat> uh, the Nextcloud Assistant. Uh, we kind of talked about this out of order, but the Nextcloud Assistant is uh, where a lot of our artificial intelligence comes into play, and the Assistant is available in the Nextcloud um, interface and allows you to interface with a bunch of the AI features. Uh, that we have, which is really, um, I'm struggling because I'm excited about a bunch of the AI features, but I, Frank's going to do a way better job. So I don't want to take away from, from his talk, but uh, the assistant is basically our portal to your AI. Uh, and of course, it uses large language models, is, uh, offers open source where possible. And we have an ethical AI rating system uh, because, well, we're thoughtful people. So AI, as you know, has a lot of challenges to it. I mean, there's ethical challenges. There's like all sorts of implications. Um, and so we've tried to create an, a system to provide you with some transparency to know which, what you're getting into when you install various AI solutions in Nextcloud. So if you're using, you know, all uh, locally hosted, open source, where the models are available, well, you might get uh, a green rating, which is like, yeah, you're doing pretty good, your data is fairly safe, and we know what's happening with it, so you can trust this. Uh, now, of course, it goes all the way down to something like a, a red rating, where it's like, you know, have some caution, and please be aware of that maybe you're sending your data to 
I don't know, the Open AI APIs so they can see some of your data. So uh, Frank will jump into that a little bit more, but the ethical AI rating system is a result of our just thoughtfulness around this. Uh, we kind of really care about your data, and that's why we made Nextcloud. Um, this was going to be a really nice video. Uh, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, YouTube. Um, if you're interested in installing Nextcloud, there's a whole bunch of different ways, as we saw earlier, to install Nextcloud. Um, there's also some amazing community projects, something like Nextcloud Pi is a really great community project to install it there. Um, it depends on your hardware, depends what you want to accomplish, depends how many users you have. And, uh, but I would encourage you to go to nextcloud.com slash install and see a few of the different options there. Also, a massive thank you to our community. Like I mentioned, it's like thousands of people from all over the world coming together to just share our passion about keeping our data held locally, uh, about creating some cool open source projects together, and just kind of like scratching our itch. Like some people are just like, I love maps. I want to create a map application. And so they can. And they can integrate that into the next cloud ecosystem uh, and allow other uh, users and other developers to just kind of help them do some cool things they never even thought of. So if you're interested, um, please join our community. We'd really love that. I mean, you are as users, but uh, our developer community is super, super friendly as well. Uh, that's it for me. I think I'm right on time to leave some time for a few questions. Uh, thank you for asking some during, but I'm happy to answer any other questions. Again, my name is Brent, and uh, feel free to email me if you have any questions. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Yes? So you said you're using Libra for the documents? Yes, you got excited about that, I noticed. Yeah, I yeah because that's what I use Libra religiously. Right. No way I'm going to use Microsoft Word. I'm with you. <laughs> So how does it work on, on that? Does it interface with the one I've got, or is it a separate one that it works with? Yeah, it, it uses the same open standards on the background, yeah. uh, but it allows you to do collaborative. Uh, sorry, I should repeat the question. It was um, with LibreOffice, how does that uh, work with the LibreOffice I'm used to using on my desktop? And um, <coughs> so you can open the same files. It's kind of the same engine in the background, just it's in your browser. Uh, now, that might sound like a downside. Uh, but one of the advantages is it allows you to collaborate with other people through the internet, right? Uh, but you can open all the same documents, and it's the very, 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 very familiar interface, so you'll feel right at home. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, there's one over there. I have a follow up on that. I know in the past, sometimes the web editing, and maybe this is a next office thing, but the web, when you edit in the web, it wouldn't sync to the actual file. Is that not the case for the collaborative one where? If you're done collaborating and editing the document, that is the same file that syncs the file system to all the clients and everything. Yeah, so the question is about uh, file syncing while you're editing your Office documents. Uh, the syncing happens in real time. So if I'm changing one cell in a spreadsheet, it's syncing at the same time as my colleague is changing, I don't know, the title of that spreadsheet or something. So it's, the syncing's happening all the time. Uh, although I don't think that was really your question. Your question was but more. The result of that is that still just like the actual yeah. Excel, yeah. Not Excel, so right? Yeah, the Libra um, document that now I can just download and, and see through the client thing. Yeah. So the resulting file is just your standard open uh, spreadsheet file if that's what you were editing. Yeah. The end result is always just the file. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay. About a year ago, you all announced the. Ability to integrate other languages, yeah. and creating new applications. Right. Has that been is there an uptake in that at all? Have there been any significant new uh, applications that have been written in other languages in that in the last year? Yeah. So we've been working continuously on on that process. I mean, it's a kind of an up ramp of allowing uh, various applications for Nextcloud to be written in more than just PHP. So he's mentioning that uh, in December we. Uh, <coughs> announced that you can, we're working on the ability to write Nextcloud applications in any language of your choosing. So if you're, a, I don't know, Rust fan, then go for it. Uh, previously, it was PHP only, um, but that, that process is evolving. 
and uh, the team is making more strides in that. I think what we would love is for people to uh, help us test that ecosystem and to make it better and it's kind of a new thing for us. So uh, yes, it's evolving uh, and let's make it evolve together some more. So there's no significant applications that have been written yet in it that have been released? Uh, I don't think so, Frank. I don't know if you have some insights into the uh, app ecosystem to... Yeah, we'll talk about it in the... Yeah, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, yes? Um, so with the app store, it looked like it was in the web interface. How does Nextcloud manage the backend apps? Because, you know, particularly with PHP giving the yeah, I think this is the beginning of where you're reaching my limits of what I feel comfortable suggesting. But uh, the App Store I showed you was the web version. Uh, the App Store is also available in Nextcloud, the interface. I know that's not your question, but I just wanted to clarify that. So, so will the manage it, uh, like at the same level that you manage the entire Nextcloud? Yeah. Area like yeah. in your orchestration or automation? Uh, so um, it depends. We talked about NixOS earlier that you can use NixOS modules to define uh, some Nextcloud applications in that system. So that would be outside of the Nextcloud ecosystem. You can define certain apps using the NixOS module, for instance. Uh, but for the most part, I think it's more standard, <laughs> let's say. Uh, or best practices to allow your Nextcloud interface to manage your applications right from the administrative dashboard. That's kind of the standard way of doing it. NixOS is a special little flower. But, uh, yeah, does that answer your question at all? Somewhat? Mostly, if, if okay. I can do it in back end orchestration and give the web server no right access, that would be preferable. Yeah, <coughs> again, I, I apologize. Uh, that's the limits of my sort of deep tech stuff. Yeah, Alex? The only reason NixOS can do it declaratively is because it handles the entire dependency chain ah. reproducibly. So if you want to do it any other way, you need to handle like, uh, dependency management yourself <coughs> the okay. oh. rather than, well, I mean, that's what Nix is doing. But if you've adopted Compose file, for example, there's no way of pulling in all the correct dependencies in that image that the installer is doing in the next cloud app store when it uses the install. That's what it's doing with that. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions, anybody? Yeah, there's one here. <clears throat> so, uh, supposing uh, folks wanted to set up a private data store on the International Space Station. Yeah, sure. Would they? Would Nextcloud be a suitable for that purpose? <laughs> I mean, it sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, like given enough like data transfer, yeah, why not? Why would they want to do the transfer? Oh, OK, OK. I see what you're asking. You're saying if on the International Space Station uh, they want kind of their own personal cloud in space, is NextCloud a good solution? Yeah, that's your question. Yeah. Yeah, why not? I mean, uh, NextCloud does not necessarily need to be connected to the internet. You can have your own isolated uh, sort of air-gapped network that runs Nextcloud that allows you to do a lot of the same functions, basically. Uh, we've seen that be used in a few different places. Uh, another interesting example of that is like you can have your own Nextcloud server that's not connected to the internet at all and use something like Tailscale uh, to connect to it and it not be publicly available at all. So if you imagine the International Space Station as really just a very far away air gapped situation, then yeah, why not? If you've got the compute up there, you can easily do it. Why, do you have a connection to, to space stuff? Because I'd love to chat about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so I'm curious about the difference between the server back end and the hub front end, yeah. and like what the difference between updating those are. Okay. Yeah. Because like, I, have, I do it on Nix with my plate, oh, nice. and I have ah, awesome. uh, you're, you're ahead of me, sorry. <laughs> I have NextCloud 28 installed, okay. right? But then it says that I'm not on the latest hub. So I'm just curious what the difference between the hub and the back end is. OK, so the question is, uh, what's the difference between the server back end and the NextCloud hub version? And the answer is, well, they're kind of the same thing. Um, 
So if you upgrade the server, you're automatically getting the hub version with it. But another part of your question is, I'm using XOS, and I get this little indication that there's a newer version, and I'm not on it, and how do I move to the new version, right? Uh, in NixOS specifically, um, you can change the version number in your, okay. your Nix config, and it'll, it'll move it over. You shouldn't like be bouncing back and forth, but I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, but yeah, you can certainly, if it's available in the Nix packages system, yeah. You know, sometimes it, there's a slight delay for that because there's some amazing community members who take what we make and make it available in the NixOS yeah. ecosystem. So there's a bit of a delay, but assuming it's available in NixOS, just change the version number in your config and you're good to go. And it's similar with Docker. Does that help? Yeah. 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 Sweet. <laughs> You'll have to show me how to use a flight to do that. <laughs> okay. I think uh, one last question. You're the last one. Okay. You said that uh, there was some work to break up next time like yeah. Architecture? Is that just conceptual? Is there like plans on how that is? Yeah, so that was conceptual a while ago. It's totally a reality now. Some of the AI features that have been use those right now. And uh, so there's an evolution of moving uh, in that direction for those sources that need it. Not everybody needs it, but there, it's now an option. So yeah, it's reality it's being used right now. There is, it's a kind of a new thing for us. Uh, so, you yeah, might not answer all the questions you're looking for, but if you have quick questions, I'll ask for the documentation. So, it's kind of fresh and new, but it's, we're super excited about it. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Um, everyone, thank you so much. This was super fun for me. And uh, I'm happy to introduce Frank. Frank is the next cloud founder and CEO. He might have to plug his things in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I can answer more questions, or maybe you should take a little break. Uh, but thank you. I really appreciate it.